Hey, what's going on? My name is Harrison, and this is going to be an Unreal Engine 4 C++ tutorial on how to move a pawn and trigger a particle effect on that pawn. Uh, this is going to be a direct copy of Epic's tutorial inside their documentation for their on their components and collision tutorial. So you kind of roll this ball around and you push a button to toggle uh, the fire particle effect. Uh, let's go ahead and play the final result right now. Uh, the there should be a GitHub link in the description below, so if you just want to grab the code and move along, you definitely can. If not, let's go ahead and check it out and recreate in C++. So this is the final product right here. We are just moving the sphere around the game world, and we push F to toggle the fire. There we go. We got it going again. Uh, so it's toggling the fire, then you push F again. It kills the fire. So let's go ahead, delete it, and recreate it in C++. Uh, the first thing we should do is probably create the action input for this trigger to happen for the particle effect. So go ahead and check out your project settings. Go down to input. Uh, right now I have action. Let me just go go ahead and create another action. Let's go ahead and create a toggle. Uh, let's set it to, I don't know, R I guess. Let's go G. Let's set it to G. I right, set that there um, for the axis mapping. I'm gonna already. I'm using the standard first person C++ template, so I'm just gonna use the move forward and move right and turn uh, axis mappings that are already um, in my input settings that are already given to you based on the template. Get out of that. Um, now let's go ahead and create the uh, pawn component. So first, new C++ class. Um, click on Show All Classes. Type in Movement and we're going to want to choose the pawn movement component. Go ahead and click next. Uh, my move, my pawn movement component, that's fine. And create class. This is going to be a long tutorial. There's a lot of stuff to do. Awesome, the engine just created the files for us. Um, right now we are in our header file. Let me close out some of my old tabs. All right, uh, the first thing we want to do is write public and uh, override the tick function. It'll be virtual void tick component uh, float delta time. Ah, ah. Float delta time enum e level tick uh, tick type. next f a actor component tick function this tick function and override that's it for the header file let's jump over into the cpp file uh, well the first thing we want to do is Go ahead and branch off is you know work off that tick function for this movement component. Uh, void you my pawn movement component uh, colon colon tick component float delta time enum e level tick tick type uh, f a actor component tick function uh, pointer uh, this tick what, what do we call it this tick function all right now let's write to it uh, super colon colon tick component Delta time, tick type, this tick function. Uh, if if the pawn owner is not this owner, uh, if update component is also false, get a component, or that they should skip the update, should skip. Update delta time. Let's 
So if any of those result into true, return. Just break out of it. Ah. Ah. Next, F vector desired movement. Desired movement this frame equals consume input vector dot get clamped max size, clamp max to size. Uh, so it's not higher than one. Times that by delta time. And it's going to be multiplied by 150. If desired movement, if desired movement, this frame is nearly zero. Um, don't forget the parentheses. I almost run ahead and move this. F hit result equals hit. Uh, safe move updated component. Desired movement this frame. Updated component. Arrow operator get component rotation. True hit. Uh, if hit dot is valid blocking object or blocking hit, run this function, slide along surface, um, desired movement this frame, one point F. Uh, it's going to be desired at this point. It's going to be one point F minus hit dot time, hit dot normal, hit. And that should be proper collision for it. Um, and that should be it for it. that component, for a movement component. Let me go ahead and compile it, see if there's any errors. The compile failed. Let me go ahead and check it out. Hit under Check out line 18. Um, oh, it's not f hit result equals hit. It's just a variable hit. So remove the equal sign. Compile again. I think that should get rid of most of them. Um, is valid blocking hit not a number of hit result? Oh, I'm sure this is just a typo. That's on line 21. Hit is valid. It's a capital I for is. Save that, compile. I think that should now compile successfully. There we go. Now let's move on to our pawn. Right click, new class, pawn. Uh, let's just call it my moving pawn. Create class. Awesome, so the engine just created the files for us. Let's go ahead and set up our header file. Class U, what do we call it? We called it like a U pawn movement. We called it U my pawn component. That's gonna be a pointer to our movement component. Uh, so right now, now we're creating a variable from the component that we just made. In the last, uh, in the last class, uh, we also want to declare our particle system. So when we push G, it'll light on fire. U particle system. U particle system component pointer. Our particle system. Uh, virtual U pawn movement component. Pointer, uh, get movement component, 
cost override. So we're going to override the original one with our new one, I believe. Now let's set up our input buttons, uh, our input functions, void, move forward. That's going to take a float access value. Void, move right, float, access value. Void, turn, float, access value. Void, particle, talk. That should be it for the header file. Let's go ahead and jump into our CPP file. There's going to be a lot here, so let's just get to it. Um, there's gonna, we're going to have to include a lot of components because we're using cameras and we're using uh, movement components and we're also using spring arms and I think we also need the uh, uh, constructor helpers as well. So let's go ahead and include everything. Hashtag include uh, camera forward slash camera component dot h. Next hashtag include uh, this next one is what we just created. My pawn movement component. Now, if you have your component in a different folder, you have to link directly to that folder, but this is in the same folder as this actor. So, my pawn movement component, that should be fine. Include components. Uh, input component. Dot H hashtag include components uh, static mesh component uh, hashtag include constructor helpers hashtag include um, nah. No, no capital line. We don't need that capital line. Oh, what's under that one? Um, game framework spring arc component. Game framework spring arm component. Dot H. I think this is the last one. Include particles. Particles. Did I spell that right? Yeah. Um, particle system component dot h let's hope everything's spelled all right my palm movement component one two three four five six seven let me double check i might be missing one uh camera under static component we want the sphere component for collision uh, components forward slash sphere component to h. I'm gonna go ahead and compile just to see if it compiles correctly that it have all those paths correct. All right, so it already failed. So let's just nip this in the bud. Um, it's in the header file and there's a CPP file. Um, all right. Uh, Check the header file. Where is that at? Uh, it's on line 36. Uh, this shouldn't be two words, just one word. So I have an error, a typo in the camera component include. So let's go ahead and correct that. Moving pawn, uh, moving pawn. Camera, camera component. So uh, there we go. There's a typo. Let's go ahead and compile. See if it works. No, it failed again. Gosh darn it. Uh, ah, where is it? Unsolved. It's not simple public virtual class. 
That's in my not moving power. Oh, I spelled this wrong. It's um it's you pawn component for this below one, but this one is our new class, which is my Pawn movement component. Is that what it says? My pawn movement component? I think that's right. Unsolved external symbol public? Is there a public something there? Let's go ahead and add it down here so we can bypass the error. Upon movement component pointer. Moving pawn. Colon colon get movement component. Const return our movement component. Let's go ahead and define our movement component up above in our constructor. Our movement component equals create sub default sub object um, you my pawn movement component uh, text um, or custom move comp custom move comp semicolon ah ah did I mess up yeah semicolon our movement component arrow operator updated component equals root component. Let's see if that gets rid of the error. Compile. My moving pawn is not a class or name space. I think it is my moving. Forty-five. Oh, it's gonna be a moving pawn. Let's go ahead and compile again. See if that works. Okay, cool. So that was a success. Let's go ahead and continue with the rest of the code. Let's go back into the constructor, and let's set up our little dude. Ah, use sphere component. Um, pointer. Sphere component. That's just what we're going to call it. Uh, create um, default sub object. Use sphere component. Add some text. And we're going to call it a uh, root component. Ah, no, not that. Ah, no, do it again. Ah, shoot. Semicolon out. All right. So now with our sphere component, our root component will equal the sphere component. Uh, and now with the sphere component, arrow operator. Let's init the radius. Init sphere radius. And we'll make it 40 units. Again, sphere component, arrow operator, set collision profile name. Again, we can set this 
in the editors panel, but I'd rather just do it here, just a quick shortcut. Um, we're gonna set it to pawn. So it has collision similar to a pawn. So your component. I'm just checking all the spelling to make sure it's right. Uh, use your component, your component. Um, all right, we should be good to move on. Let's go ahead and create our static mesh. Use static mesh component equals, no, we won't give it a name, right? Um, uh, use static mesh component will be called sphere visual. It'll be our visual sphere. Create default sub object, and that's gonna be a use static mesh component. Uh, let's call it something. Text uh, visual representation. Representation. All right. Uh, so what are we gonna do here? Grab this here visual arrow operator set of attachment root component. Now it's attached to the root. Uh, let's go ahead and immediately add the sphere to it and we're going to use the constructor helpers to get the path of the sphere mesh and immediately attach it. So static constructor helpers right here. Um, f object finder use stack mesh sphere visual asset we're gonna call it and then let's pass in the path which is gonna be forward slash game yes start a content I am using the start content provided by unreal forward slash shapes forward slash shapes sphere dot shape underscore sphere and that should be it now if that's successfully important if we successfully pulled that mesh now let's go ahead and set it so if sphere visual asset dot succeeded let's go ahead and do something with it uh, sphere visual arrow operator set static mesh sphere visual asset dot object so that's what the sphere visual will be equal to or the mesh will be equal to sphere visual arrow operator set relative location f vector zero zero ah shoot and negative 40 Um, yeah, uh, then sphere visual arrow operator set the world scale 3D set as a vector Oh shoot, let's go ahead and compile this just to make sure we're good to go. See if there's any errors, catch them immediately. There's already an error, let's check it out. Oh man, there's lots of uh, Set collision profile, that's a typo. Let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Um, where are you, boy? Set collision profile. All right here, set collision. Uh, it's set collision profile name, I believe, right? Let me double check that. Yeah, 
yeah, that should be good. Um, succeeded. I think I spelled succeeded wrong. It's two E's and one D, right? Let's compile that, see if it works. If not, we'll continue. All right, so that compile was successful. Let's continue. Oh, man. Uh, um, all right, we're moving on to our particle system. Our particle system equals create default sub object u particle system component. Let's set up some text on it. Uh, movement particles. Um, our particle system. Set up attachment. We're going to set up to root. No, we're going to set it to the sphere visual because we want it to. We don't want the whole thing to blow or to have the fire. We just want the sphere to. Sphere visual. Our particle system. B auto activate because we want we want to activate when we push the button G not immediately not on not by default our particle system set relative location F vector negative 20 zero zero um, and then 20 um, for this particle asset again we're going to pull it from the starter content using the um, constructor helpers and that's where th in this example it'll it would probably be better to put it in the header file and make it visible anywhere or edit anywhere so you can you know, drag and drop different particles in and out and kind of see which one you like the most. Static constructor. Construct. Oh man, I'm losing it. Um, constructor helpers. Um, F object finder. View particle system component, right? No, just particle system. Um, particle asset. It's gonna be our name for it. Um, particle asset. Now let's pass in the path of where it's located. Game slash starter content slash particle slash p underscore fire uh, dot p underscore fire. Okay, that's that. Now if we succeeded, um, particle asset dot succeeded then our particle system arrow operator set the template particle uh, asset object right asset dot object okay so after our particle system let's go ahead and set up our spring arm Use spring arm component pointer spring arm. That's going to equal create default sub object. Default, come on, default sub object. And that's going to be a use spring arm component. Uh, just call it something. Um, camera attachment. Semicolon out. Spring arm. Arrow operator. Set up attachment. Root component. Spring arm. Arrow operator. Uh, relative rotation. Relative rotation equals F rotator. 
Uh, negative 45. 0 0.f and 0 0.f. <clears throat> Spring arm, arrow operator. Uh, target arm length equals 400. Spring arm, arrow operator. B, enable camera log, camera lag. Rather, so it doesn't. So there's some lag for when you move the camera. Set to true. Spring arm, arrow operator. Um, camera lag speed, and we'll set it to three. That should it, that should be it for the spring arm. We've got a few more things to do, then we should be done with the constructor script. A few camera components. Pointer, call it camera, equals create default sub object. It's going to be a U camera component. Uh, let's add some text to it. Uh, let's call it our camera. The camera, set up attachment. And we're going to attach it to the spring arm. U spring arm component socket name. Uh, and now we just added everything to our actor. Now, immediately when we begin the game, we want to possess the player. Let's go auto possess player E. Auto receive auto uh, receive input player zero. That should be it for the constructor. I'm going to compile the code and see if it works. And if there's any errors, we will get out of it. Um, compile. All right. There's an error. Let's go ahead and debug it. Uh, forty. That should be easy enough, right? Um, 40 is missing a semicolon. Uh, yeah, right here, we're missing a semicolon right here. Save, recompile. That's wrong. Um, 43, I think I'm also missing a semicolon. 43, that's wrong. Spring arm, you spring arm, spring arm. I spelled spring arm somewhere in line 47. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, this is capital P. I have to lowercase that P for spring arm. Let's compile. All right, that compile was successful. Let's go ahead and move along and get this thing done. Uh, we're not going to put anything in the begin play function. We're not going to put anything in the tick function. Uh, let's go ahead and move down to our player input component and set up our inputs. Input component, arrow operator, bind action. I think we called ours toggle. Toggle, comma, bind it to this, uh, reference my moving pawn our actor colon colon move forward no uh particle toggle my bad shoot i messed that up uh on toggle we do ie pressed this bind it to this reference a my moving pawn colon colon particle toggle So this toggle comes from where we made the input. Let me just double check, edit, project settings. Over an in input, we created the toggle action. So we're gonna reference that. Now let's set up our axes. Input component, arrow operator, bind axis, uh, move forward. 
find it to this actor a reference this actor's function my moving pawn colon colon move forward I'm going to copy and paste that two more times um, this is going to be move right this is going to be turn now let's fill out the functions uh, instead of move forward it's going to be move right and instead of move forward it's going to be turn okay that should be it for the, our components we already have this function right here which returns our custom movement component now let's go ahead and make our movement happen void a my moving pawn colon colon move forward uh, float access value if uh, if our movement component is true and our movement component is the root component uh, our movement component arrow operator up data component is equal to the root component let's proceed so if those return true our movement component arrow operator add input vector get actor forward vector times the axis value semicolon uh, now let's do the same thing for move right I'm going to copy and paste it so to move forward it's going to be move right <clears throat> component and everything else should stay the same instead of getting the forward vector though right here we're going to get uh, actor right vector uh, let's go down to turn void a my moving pawn colon colon turn float axis value F rotator new rotation uh, yeah. get actor rotation new rotation dot yaw equal uh, plus equals axis value set actor rotation to new rotation one more we're going to do a void this is going to be the toggle particle function void a my moving pawn colon colon toggle particle if our particle system is not null our particle system exists and our particle system our operator template let's toggle its active state our particle system toggle active all right and I think that's it let's um save and compile let's see we have any bugs if so we will uh, edit it we'll debug it all right there were some errors let me check them out toggle particle is not a function that's 117 all right looks like those are only the ones a moving pawn toggle particle um, oh is it particle toggle actually um, yeah it's particle toggle my bad particle toggle save it I think that should get rid of a few of them compile alright it was a success let's drag and drop it in uh, my moving pawn 
Uh, where's the sphere on that one? You can see that we already drag it in and there's already camera lag on the spring arm, which is pretty cool. Let's push play. Uh, we can turn, but I can't move and we don't have the mesh. So let's go back and debug it. Um, where's my visual representation? Um, sphere visual asset. Game start content shapes. shapes. Is it shapes or shape? Uh, all right, so we had a typo here. Get rid of that. Um, move forward. Move pawn. Move right. Um, Let's go ahead and compile and see what happens. I'm gonna delete the one in game. Move back in. So now when we drag in, now we have the sphere after uh, correcting that typo. If we push G, we do a lot on fire. But I can't move yet. I'm not sure why. Um. Okay, I found the error on why my sphere wasn't moving. Um, I traced it down to the move, our custom movement component. I forgot to put a uh, exclamation mark here. So if desired movement is not nearly zero, we will proceed. So before that, I was missing that. So let's add that back in, save, compile, and it should work. All right, compiled. Now let's play. So now we're moving them around the game world. Push G. We have fire. Uh, let's see if we can get a wall somewhere. A wall's coming up soon. All right. And so collisions are also enabled. So kind of moving around that wall and push G again, kill the fire. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.